name's Matt Finnell. I work with Silencer Co. I uh, run our public relations and social media and e-commerce efforts. And today we're here showing you the brand new Hybrid 46M. It's the multi-caliber suppressor. Everything from 17 Hornet up to uh, dangerous round, uh, dangerous game rounds. That includes 45 ACP, uh, 338 Lapua. Basically, if you can fit it down the hole, it'll suppress it. So again, my name is Matt Pinnell. I uh, work in the marketing department. I get to run our public relations and social media efforts and our e-commerce efforts uh, with the company. Um, and today, I get to talk to you a little bit about just the history of Silencer Co. Um, you guys may have seen this video, and you may not have seen it. I don't even know if you're going to be able to hear it, but we're going to see it. The keys to innovation can be found anywhere ambition dwells. Even within the walls of a home garage. The kindling of inspiration ignited by one simple motivation, to do it better. Through experimentation and struggle, great ideas come from the hours of nightly ritual. We fought the noise and began a revolution that impacted with industrial fervor. The age of silence brought back from the dead and made accessible to those it had been kept from for decades, peering through diverse lenses. We test and retest. We push ourselves until something breaks. Find out why, then start over. With every success, a thousand failures. And for every failure, invaluable knowledge is gained. These new paths formed from trial and error have led our session for details that craft precise innovation We've taken risks, watched dreams run head first into commercial failure, and felt helpless as good intentions sparked unintended consequences. We are no stranger to turbulent waters because we understand that they can't disrupt an industry without shaking it up. Playing it safe is something we leave to those who care more about the bottom line than they do raising the bar. We have no tolerance for mediocrity and would rather burn the fiery chasm of failure than to watch ourselves fizzle out in the slog of normalcy. Our gratitude for the past is immense. It's the foundation that our future builds upon. And while our garage is a little bigger than it once was, the driving motivation established over a decade ago continues to fuel the unquenchable nature of our obsession to do it better. It would be easy to avoid risk, get cruise control, and rely on our past successes to stay in business. But that's not why we get out of bed in the morning. We strive to make the best for our customers because they deserve the best. And make no mistake, we are just getting started. So that's, that's basically Silencer Co, a brief summary of who we are and what we've done. Um, we've had a lot of successes, uh, we've also had a lot of failures. Um, but we've been fortunate enough to be able to learn from our, our mistakes that we've made along the way. Uh, a lot of good ideas that we thought um, would be great ideas, uh, sometimes they don't work out. Um, but that's really a, an opportunity to get better. Like we are always pushing stuff to the next level as much as we can. We're an innovative company. Uh, from, from the very beginning, we've always wanted to innovate and to make the industry better. This is our very first can right here that we ever made. Actually, this is the second version of our first can. You guys can probably guess which one it is, right? Hopefully. It's our 22, 22 can. Um, our president, uh, his name's Jonathan Schultz, he was out shooting with some friends and he had a, a rimfire can that he was shooting with, and uh, he and his buddy sent about seven or eight thousand rounds through this can. 
and then they tried to disassemble it to clean it, and they realized they couldn't even access the can that they were using. And so that was the catalyst, the spurring moment that uh, John sat down and said, well, I can make this can, but I, I can make it better. I can make it so it's easily accessible. I can make it so that you can clean it, and I can extend the life of a 22 suppressor from 10,000 rounds to forever. And better yet, if I do this, I'm gonna make a, a lifetime warranty with it. So this is actually, after a week of researching, buying a CNC mill, buying some bar stock, and learning how to run a CNC machine, uh, he cut out his first uh, 22 Sparrow. Um, so that's the, the first can that we ever had that brought us, I guess, into the whole game. Um, there are a lot of, I'm just giving you a brief overview, there are a lot of other innovative steps and, and, and products that we've had that uh, have helped bring us to where we are today. But some of the technology from our, our uh, Sparrow helped us develop the Salvo 12, which is obviously a shotgun suppressor. Who here has ever shot the Salvo 12 by raised hands? About half, maybe a little bit over half? It's amazing. It's a, it'll, like, it'll change your experience, it'll change your outlook on suppressors. This was a can that uh, we were told would never be possible. Um, but uh, again, John sat down and figured out uh, how to make it all work. And this is a, an in interesting stat right here. In its full configuration, it brings the sound of a shotgun down to below 140 decibels. Um, one thing it also does is it reduces the recoil up to 45%. Um, maxim. We talked about the Maxim. The design of the Salvo, the Salvo has these different compartments um, that make it modular. So you can have it 12 inches long or you can bring it down to 6 inches long. These different compartments are each a baffle. It's the same design uh, with the Maxim 9. Each line and cut you can see there is a different baffle with our end cap on the end. And what holds our Salvo 12 together, there are two rods that go through the middle and basically piece it together. Same thing with the Maxim 9. Um, the Omega. Who, who's ever heard of the Omega? This is, this is the can right here. This is the top selling suppressor ever in the history of suppressors. There are more Omegas out there than there are every other can. Um, this, and this is what really kind of opened the door for what we get to do here today with you. Um, this can created such a stir and it was, it's so light. Um, and such a great can for the hunting industry that it opened doors that we didn't even realize existed. And then, um, kind of along the way, we have our original hybrid here, uh, the Hybrid 46. Uh, hybrid 46 came out six years ago. It's been the only uh, big bore suppressor. It hasn't had any competition uh, until today, actually, because I mean, we're going to talk about this one in a minute, but we just released this one today. Um, Hybrid 46 is uh, our, our first one and done can. Um, and it did so well that we developed the Omega 36M right here. So very similar to the Omega 300, right? But this can, the M stands for modular. So it's, mod it's a modular can. You can take the front part of the can off and make it small. Pretty cool um, for a lot of other, a lot of reasons. And uh, so we took, we basically took the popularity of this can, um, the versatility of this can, and threw it into this can. Um, this has a 36.36 uh, bore on it, which is why it's called the Omega 36M. And it is extremely light, um, extremely strong. It can handle everything from 223 to 338. This can has done so well. Um, we realized that we were pretty much doing a disservice to the industry if we didn't follow it up with something that was just as good, something that could do a little bit more. Which is why we then created this. This is the, this is the hybrid, 46M. Same concept, same design, kind of an evolution of what we offer. The M, of course, modularity, you can take the front part of the can off. We'll touch back to that, um, just a quick introduction. I'm Quentin Mount, I've been with the company for a little bit and kind of more on the technical side of things so happy to answer any questions like that uh, as far as shortening it down it's very caliber dependent um you may i mean on like nine millimeter you're looking at four decibel difference so it, and kind of depends on post as well but yeah i mean it's find the right application for the configuration right so 
If I'm putting out a handgun, then I'm probably going to go short configuration. Even if it's a little bit louder, you just don't have that big of weight sticking off the end, right? Keep it nice and compact. Same thing, sub gun, I'll run in a short configuration. Uh, it's going to use our Charlie mounting platform, which is we have three different thread patterns for all of our suppressors. Um, very industry standard these days for a lot of them. Starting with the Omega 300 kind of became, the threads on that became one of the main industry standards. But we started switching more over to the Charlie pattern, which is external threads that locks onto with the taper. So it's just more secure way of mounting your uh, accessories to the silencer. And then ships with a 45 caliber and a 30 caliber end cap. So the front caps can be interchanged. There are multiple sizes available. The 45, nine, or 355, uh, 30 caliber, and 223. So you have a lot of different options there. However, it does ship with two of those to give you most uh, versatility with optimization out of the box. So there's a noticeable jump shooting 30 caliber. With the 30 caliber front cap, you're getting about five decibels quieter than if you were to just use the 45 front cap. So that's why we included that. Uh, weight is going to be 12.2 ounces naked in the short configuration, that's no mount, no front cap, all the way up to 19.9 ounces in the heaviest configuration. So I mean, that's adding pretty much every accessory you want to get it up to that weight. So you can choose between a bunch of different configurations and kind of just go with what suits you. Um, length again, uh, naked short configuration is gonna be 5.78 out to 9 inches in full configuration that's adding on like a flash hanger front cap as well. You can go from like your 22 Hornets, 5.56, 5.7, all the way up to 45.70, 3.38 Lapua through that suppressor. And it sounds pretty good on 3.38 Lapua. I was impressed. We ended up metering it and it was here and safe on Lapua. And here and safe to the shooter on Lapua in the short configuration even. So if you wanted to have it in that little short configuration on that big of a gun, it's still gonna be here and safe for the shooter. Uh, it's gonna be made of titanium tube, keep the weight down, 17.4 uh, stainless heat treat blast baffle uh, to absorb all the blasts coming straight into the can, and then you're gonna have ink melt baffles after that for durability. So, really excited about it. Lots of versatility there because you can put on pretty much everything you want. Um, common thing we get asked about that is like, why do you make cans that it'll do everything? Aren't you just gonna sell one at that point? But no, it's gonna be more of kind of the gateway suppressor for everyone. Like, you get it, you can swap around all your different guns and then they're like, wow, why did I ever shoot on suppressor? Right? Uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not about silencer code, but everything that we make, we make in one factory. Uh, we own over 130 CNC machines. We move, I don't know how many tons of bar stock through our factory. We recycle tons and tons of, of uh, aluminum and stainless steel and titanium. But everything from our flash hiders and our muzzle devices to our lower receivers, our cans, um, even the anodizing process or any seracoding process, we do all of it. Uh, we have over 200 employees right now that uh, yeah, that run basically runs the show. All Sweet. Ain't that neat? Oh wow. Ain't that cool? Oh wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Ain't that cool? That's one of the coolest little guns. Yes. Same. Change this cool gun as opposed to straight down. 